the grandiose title, I think, that we chose was uh, Suse Kovaris, a fork in the road, or Open Suse Kovaris, a fork in the road. And really, it's about the future of Open Suse. How do we as a project want to evolve? And before we can talk about the future, it does make sense to see a little where we are and some of the observations. Because as you can imagine, with requests that are coming towards the board, with part of the role of the board, there is just some observations we, as a current board, um, have made. And unfortunately, um, two of us sit and Attila couldn't make it for um, personal and, and, and professional reasons. Just uh, work didn't allow them to come. And with that, do you want to take us through some of those observations? Yeah, thank you, Gerald. And good morning, everybody from my side as well. Yeah, Gerald mentioned already, we need to talk about the future. Um, according to the, the wisdom that it is not said that everything will be better if it changes but certainly we have to change in order to get better. And if we look at where we are at the moment, the issues that we've seen, and what you see here on the slides is not necessarily new. A couple of those things we had already seen in the previous years. For example, at the moment, we are at, as OpenSUSE are not a legal entity or a structure that allows us to deal with donations and sponsorships like those companies that are sponsoring this event currently, we're giving them a hard time because they we cannot just say here, OpenSUSE, we give you the money and uh, make the best out of it. That just doesn't work at the moment because we are not a, a legal entity or a GBR or something like that. Another point that came up during especially the last year is are the responsibilities of the board. What is the board supposed to do? If we look at our wiki, there are a couple of points listed, but they cannot be exclusively um, describing the total of the, let's call it, duties that the board have. So, what are we as board supposed to do? Do we have the trust of the community in that way that we work in the best sense in order to push the community forward to develop the OpenSUSE project or not. And finally, the third thing, which we've listed here as the legal structure, the process to establish a legal structure is somehow stuck. Why is it stuck? Is it cannot be only the board that is pushing this forward, it needs to come out of the community. And here's the question, where's the silent majority? Is the silent majority okay with the process? Do we say, yes, we want something, make it an EV or a uh, foundation or whatever structure behind that we become an, enti uh, an entity that is able to deal, for example, with, with sponsors, sponsoring other uh, conferences and so on? Or do we want to stay the way as we are? And the question is, how do we stay at the moment? Next one. The current state uh, of open source, uh, uh, in a way, has been asked in uh, the mailing list already. Uh, how much uh, open source is Leap still? Because we share the entire code base with uh, SLE. Uh, how do we see that in the future? What we are trying to do today is basically leave you with a lot of questions that we have. Uh, that we want to share with you because we think it's important that the community has its say on it. Um, how do we proceed? How do we keep our own identity? Check. Okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm Maurizio, for those who don't know me. As a, a thought in, uh, in, uh, in, su in succession of uh, what we were 
thinking about what the current state is, uh, I think it's also important to maybe point out uh, a few things that uh, we thought as a board that were important in terms of achievements um, that would uh, in, in a way um, help the, the whatever direction we decide in terms of legal structure. And um, we thought that, for example, uh, we needed to sort of uh, put the grounds for a moderation team or um, uh, in general terms like a, a better way to um, have a, a check on all the different communication platforms that we have. As you may be aware, we have, of course, mailing lists, we have the forums, but we also have social media. And then in the recent years, we started having um, uh, metrics channels, telegram groups, uh, Discord as well. And um, all these different communication channels, they sort of uh, have the moderate themselves within their own communities. But we also thought that in order to have um, uh, a more clear uh, process, it was important to sort of uh, create a unified system um, in how uh, these communities uh, uh, can uh, Better, better actually get support from us in terms of uh, moderation. So we thought that, for example, one of the, the steps to do was to create uh, a team of moderators that uh, represent each platform, for example. So we would have um, two representatives from, from the forums, two representatives from uh, IRC, uh, mailing lists, and so on, so that this group of people can sort of be like a council, communicate with each other, uh, have like a common um, best practices, and also communicate in terms of uh, uh, when there are issues with uh, some violations, which I will get, I will get to next, um, so that it, there is a more clear and transparent way of, uh, of, pro uh, of processing all this. Uh, but in order to do that, we also had to um, look at the guide, uh, open source the guiding principles, and we realized that perhaps those guiding principles needed uh, an extension. Uh, that's how we decided to, uh, with the community, talk about in one of the community meetings about the possibilities to implement a code of conduct. And um, there were a few community members with the support of the board, of course. Uh, that drafted a code of conduct, uh, which was revised a few times, and then it was uh, submitted to the community, uh, was it in January? Yeah. Yeah, around January. And um, that was an idea to sort of uh, help everyone understand what are the, I don't want to call them rules, but they're, they're in, in, in a community there should be some um, uh, common denominators on how to, to work together and be together within this community. And that was lacking, and we thought it was important to have, uh, not because we want to police uh, everything, but it, it, it is important when in a community like OpenSUSE, which is very diverse, there are people from different cultures, uh, gender identities, uh, sexual orientation, and so on, everybody should feel welcome, which is the core of the, guide, the open source guiding principles is to be an inclusive community. And we were feeling that uh, although the guiding principles were already pretty strong, we needed something extra to, to, to add on to that to, uh, for clarification purposes. Um, on top of that, uh, I think an important thing that we were able to to implement quite successfully, I think. Uh, all the board uh, meetings uh, previously were clo closed in the sense that uh, people that were not board members or not specifically invited uh, would not be able to attend. Uh, we opened them up uh, to everybody from the community and also outsiders to join. Um, we talk about different issues that are raised through our um, Yeah, um, through a public uh, ticket track, tracker, 
And uh, any, anybody, not just board members, anybody can actually uh, open, uh, open one of these tickets. And uh, that be, would become a topic in the agenda of, of the board. And uh, I think uh, this is, is um, we think as a board that uh, this is a, a pretty important step in the direction on also like to, to evolve and to, and to progress in, um, in what could at some point become uh, a, a legal structure if we go that way. Because without all these steps, it's very difficult to, to, to achieve that. Um, on top of, the, I mean, the public board meeting is not the only public meetings. We have several others. Uh, for example, we have uh, community meetings, which are weekly as well, with uh, twice a week, I think, depending because there are, we are covering two different time zones. Uh, and then there are uh, release engineering meetings, which those have been on honestly going on for, for quite long. Uh, I think they were even before the, we opened up the public uh, board meetings. And then we have open to the leap uh, features meeting, where uh, new implementations for leap are discussed. Um, and uh, I think one of the things that actually came out of that meeting was the, the multimedia codex, mm -hmm. uh, which will be hopefully implemented soon, I'm not sure, but... Crossing fingers. <laughs> Crossing fingers, yeah. Um, so, the, um, I feel like I'm, I'm speaking a bit too long, but uh, the idea was to, for, for this, of the pro uh, was really the, the evolution of the project. We, we needed some milestones to start. It's obviously not done, the work. We have a lot to do. And uh, in terms of governance, I mean, is there any, any, anything further do, that we should do? Or uh, are we going the right direction? Uh, you know, we feel that we are, but uh, sometimes, uh, as uh, Axel was uh, mentioning earlier, it's very hard when there is not much feedback coming our way to know whether it's just a silent majority agreeing with everything we do, or if uh, there is actually room for improvement. I would say perhaps the most likely there is, uh, so we would invite everybody to, to also help us uh, in, that, in, in, in the development of this project. Okay, I think it works. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, another aspect that we've been considering for, I don't know, since I've started being on the board, maybe even before that, Axel probably knows, is that the role of the board is uh, weird. Uh, to put it mildly, like, we're, we're elected by y'all to essentially represent the project and to support the project in some way. But in some respects, it's hard to feel like we know whether we have the trust and confidence based on what we are allowed to do. Like, sometimes it feels like we don't know if we can support the growth of the project or advocate on behalf of it. Um, you know, a little while ago, Axel had his uh, um, proposal for the project to sign on for um, the right to repair letter for the European Union and uh, by the FSFE and we weren't, we couldn't figure out whether or not we could actually do it, and it seemed that there was less than a great response to doing it when we po posited it on the project list. But at the same time, I kind of felt like if we wanted to provide a, uh, oh, is that also active? Is that why it's doubling? Yeah, okay. Um, we wanted to provide a, a means to, encourage the ability for OpenSUSE to be available on more machines and to be able to deploy it on those machines. And we considered that right to repair also includes the ability to load your own operating system, your own software, being able to do your own stuff like that. And it, it, it felt odd to us that we were basically being chastised a little bit for trying to do this, you know. And if we can't do this kind of stuff, can we even go further into, you know, this effort to do to set up a legal entity, to go through the process of figuring all this stuff out, because one consequence of having a legal entity that we are responsible for as the board 
is that we have to do all these things. We have to advocate for the project. We have to support the project administratively, financially, and all these other things. We have to be able to support our mission. And, and right now, it feels like our current setup doesn't let us do any of these things. And, and like, if we want to go further down this road, this has to change. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right. Um, is this you, Axel, I think? All right, sure, why not? So We wanted to share that one, Neil, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, so where do we wanna go? Because do we want to have this foundation thing that, God, I don't know, we've been talking about this since I started in the project, and it's been going on even before that. Should the board enable this? Should we actually, like, is it, as you guys all elect us, you know, every couple of years or so, is that, is that, to enable us to support you guys, or are we just here to be like, you know, you bad, bad tallywag, you, whatever? Yeah, that's that's exactly the question, and this is where you knew, you as community need to think about what do you want the project and what do you want the board to be? Do you want the board to be a kind of enabler to drive the further development, or is it just a janitor service who is? Uh, <laughs> sitting at the front door and making sure that the bad guys stay outside and the good side come in, the good guys come inside. And to my understanding, that cannot be the case. Uh, as, as Neil mentioned beforehand, we had this discussion about signing a letter um, that was issued by the Free Software Foundation about the right to repair, which went into the similar direction as we had the initiative uh, before that uh, about the, the threat to our privacy by pre-installed operation systems. We had a lengthy discussion on the, um, on the mailing list and uh, some people were opposing heavily, no, this is not uh, within your uh, area of responsibility, you sh should not be allowed. Some other people wrote to me personally that they were very proud that we as a project kick off an initiative like this and they were very happy and very unpleased uh, that we couldn't sign this as a project. And to my understanding, we as a board should be able to take these kind of initiatives to and foster the free and soft, uh, free and open source software idea and the spirit of freedom behind it. And you, as a community, should uh, consider you should uh, think about whether you want this as well, whether you th think this is the direction that the project should go. Not only providing nice distributions in terms of free and open source, but as well. Um, considering the higher aspect of freedom and software freedom um, that is being started and uh, contributed by this community. Yeah, like the, op the OpenSUSE project's mission is to promote the use of Linux and open source software all over the world. And as things are currently set up, we couldn't even do the basic thing of like putting a signature that says, yeah, this is in our mission, we want, we want to advocate for this by signing a letter that costs us nothing to do and whatever, but we couldn't do it. So I feel like we're hampered in a very real way to actually support the, our mission of the project. And, uh... So um, I do have a built-in inconsistency detector probably comes from, uh, from my formal training, logic training as part of my studies. And, and what I sensed over time serving on the board um, of OpenSUSE are some inconsistencies of what some of the things that we aspire to are, some of the tasks that are the board and, and, and other community members, and I don't want to differentiate board versus community because we are all part, living parts of the community or the communities. But I detected those inconsistencies between um, what came from different parties. Like we, we want the foundation was like mission statement number one I, I received when I, when I joined the board uh, nearly three years ago. Um, but then I found that there was also pushback, as Axel and Neil described, against some of the things that would actually need to be the case, legally need to be the case, if we had something like a foundation or similar. Um, and as you know, 
I'm, I'm the only board member not elected by you folks. Um, I'm, I'm here nominated um, by SUSE. So sometimes I'm wearing two hats. And the biggest part of my role, I think, is, is connecting OpenSUSE and SUSE and explaining OpenSUSE to SUSE corporate um, and, and sometimes vice versa. And the one thing I can share from the SUSE side, SUSE is very open. I do not have an objective, a mission, direction, whatever from SUSE to push for a foundation, EV, whatever, nor do I have an objective mission, whatever, to prevent the creation of that. Which means it's on us, and now that's me wearing my, my community hat, which is the bigger one, um, usually. It's, it's on us to decide what we want and what works consistently um, and then engage a conversation with SUSE. But right now, frankly, and I've told that uh, to my fellow board members, right now we are not even in a position to have some of the conversations um, that would need to take place between OpenSUSE, represented by the board and others, and, and SUSE to take, should we desire so, some of those next steps. So we need to come to a group consensus, which means some will disagree on some aspects, most likely, but we as OpenSUSE need to come to a, to a rough group consensus and then task a group of us with, or groups of us with different tasks and I mean, putting moderation in place, what SITS is helping with on the finance side um, is, an, is an important step. Um, and then take it from there. Or roughly stay where we are and still do some of those things because I think you know, getting more insight into finance, financial aspects, um, continuing with the travel support program, getting consistent about moderation, increasing the collaboration, and I'm seeing some faces here between the enterprise side and the OpenSUSE side. Those are good things. So there is a lot of work we can do regardless of what that big decision amounts to, and we should do them. Um, and I'm seeing many of you doing, doing different aspects, but there is then, no pun intended, there is a leap should we decide to go in one direction. There is a leap we need to take together. And for that, and that's why we, we started the, the conference with this session, for that we need the input of as many of you as possible, um, suggestions, concerns, questions. So let's use the next three days for that. And I think we probably have time for some initial questions, should there be some in the room. Okay, that keeps us honest. No questions <laughs> here <laughs> and now. Um, outside in, in breaks. Yeah, we can have the discussion outside and we'll collect the feedback in the last session of this conference, which is on Saturday, quarter to four. Thank you, and now have fun. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>